Okay, I just want to go through the SRP tools and show you um, how this how this works in Mindscape 2021. So SRP can be found under Surface Engineering Open Cut, and there's an SR there's a short range planning icon on the ribbon. So how how this works? It's it's scenario based. So it asks you for a mine plan name. Well, the mine plan name then it gets put into that to your current design file where you can manage your, your layers. It helps manage your layers for you. So the first thing I need to do is create a plan. So I'm gonna create one, just call it pit for pit 01. I'm gonna copy from that topo um, mesh group, the current DTM, because I have to start with um, a, a, a surface. And then you can, I'm, I'm picking a plan for parameter source, and I'll show you where we set up where you can override those parameters. Said okay, and then what's gonna happen is it's copying data into your layer you picked or your surfaces you picked, and you'll see feedback down below letting you know that that plan is now ready to um, set. So if I come in here and pick P01, and as you can see what it does is it go it goes ahead and it turns on the, the current topography that you copied over in this case it's just contours so you can it, it's a little easier to deal with and then what i'll show you is it also created a mesh for you so if i just pop open my mesh in pit 01 you see this one i've copied over so i turn on p01 and there's my um, my mesh and of course you have total visual overrides on this. So I'll just go ahead and do a height Q visual override. I can pick from multiple uh, color palettes. I'm gonna pick from terrain one colors, pick the low end, pick the high end and hit apply. And as you can see, it, it sets it up nicely for colors. So we'll just leave that view here and I'll show you what I'm gonna, what I'm trying to design. I turned on my design um, elements and I'll go to render order and change the render order. So you can see here, I'm gonna do a truck shovel cut. I'm gonna do a ramp and then I'll do a fill. And I'll show you how quickly you can do this. So I'll just turn that stuff back off. I'll go ahead and turn off this mesh. I don't need it any longer. I can just turn it off here or I can uncheck it there. Just collapse this. So now I'm ready to go and I'm just gonna start the first cut. So if I bring my form back up that was stowed, you can see that we have cut fill ramp. And then of course, uh, I'll show you this audit log and call outs. So you, you have all, um, all this functionality to help you build this design. So I'm just, I'll go to cut. And the first thing I'm gonna do is look at my uh, parameters. So I've got a cut angle of 60, sample density, that's along the element, how, how often it's gonna sample your DTM. Sp specific gravity, if you're worried about tonnage, tons instead of cubic meters or cubic yards, you can just go ahead and put that in here. Swell factor, in this case, I'm doing a cut. So my swell factor, there won't be a swell factor. But you, you can put that in there because you can get a swell volume. So if we put a 20, let's do a 20% swell in there. Uh, these are just how you want to display your um, contours. And then, of course, you have um, overrides on how you want to, how, the colors you want to see these elements. So first thing you have to do is, in this case, what I need to do is determine how I want to set this bench, what elevation. In this case, what I'm going to use is a bench slope. Okay, I'm gonna use a bench slope. So let's just go down here, let's clear this. I don't need this schema. I just have, a. am gonna use a bench slope. So if I go edit this, this is just an MS, MXL expression in Mindscape where I actually want, um, I want the, the water to flow from north to south at a one and a half percent grade. So I just created an expression surface and you'll see it here in a minute. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna drape it on that surface 
and then I'm going to project up to the current surface, pit, pit 01, which is what you see in this contour. So the first thing you can do is drape and project. So I'll just select that element. And it's going to go down there and do um, show you in feedback it's doing some work. So that's that's the projection of that element at, at the slope. I need to mesh them. I need to mesh that first. And then you'll see it's going to turn on contours of how it's meshed. So now I've got the contour. So that's what it's going to look like. So if I just minimize this and if I hide this um, DTM, you can see that's that's the cut right there. And if you notice, it's giving me contours. Those are so because there's a one and a half percent slope on there. So that's what that's what the cut's going to look like in my design. So if I turn this DTM back on, pop open my short range planning. And then the next thing I'm going to do is compute the cut volume. So it, it's gone out there and it says, OK, in, in this particular example, you have 688,000 cubic meters of material you're going to cut. And of course, it's swelled now. Because I'm using it in thousands of, of cubic meters, it's, it's, it's less numbers to deal with. You have total control over this. If you just go to File Info in your units, and you can see that I've got my volume units set to thousands of cubic meters. If you don't want that, you just change it back to cubic meters. I just like working with le um, smaller numbers. So that's completed. So now. Before I can move on to the next step, stage where I want to get my ramp up here, I need to commit the plan. What the commit plan does is it takes this information and it merges it into um, that your starting topography, and it creates a new surface, a new starting surface or DTM, so you can um, continue your design work in um, your other steps. So it's just it's just creating the it's just merging the mesh right now. So now now that the merge it's um, it's complete. So what it does now is it turns on turns off the previous steps and turns on what what your new surface looks like in a contour. And of course, what it does also is it creates a new mesh topography or, or DTM. In this case, uh, it's PP or PID zero one. Um, O2 step O2. So now that's that's what it looks like with um, with the bench cut out and the slope going down down uh, from north to south. So I've I've done that. I've got that done. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to build um, a ramp. So I've got an existing ramp, but I need to get up to this elevation, this bench, so I can start moving the material off for a dump. So next thing I'm going to do is just pop open my form. And then I'm just going to go to ramp. And again, I'm going to look at my um, parameters I want. Ramp width, cut angle, fill angle, sample density, specific gravity, and swell factor. Well, this one probably doesn't have a swell because it's already been swelled. So I'll just set that to one. And again, all this. So the first thing you need to do is... Um, in this case, it's not going to be a balanced ramp. I'm just going to build a ramp. And I already have the grade on here. I know I have the grade. I just graded that element. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and project that element. And notice I've selected, uh, there's an element right below me. And so if I just use the little cycle button, it will find that um, element that I need. You can just cycle back and forth. So it found the element. Now what it's doing is projecting the ramp based on these parameters and the current topography I have. So so there there's my there's my ramp. Okay? All projected. Okay, so now that I have those ramps that ramp projected, I need to go ahead and mesh this. Again, it's it's really not much different than how we did the cut. It's going to take that information that I have, and it's just going to go ahead and create what it thinks it needs, what it's going to look like after it's meshed. And then, of course, I have to do the compute, the cut and fill, before I can move on. So I have 59,000 uh, cubic meters. 
Now I'm just going to go ahead and commit the plan. You have to commit the plan to go forward to the next step. So now that um, it's it's completed the the merge of the DTM um, services, so now what it does is it just goes ahead and it just contours those those elements for you. And again, once again, it's it's created uh, a, another DTM service, so it just keeps me in order on what steps I've done. So now I can turn that that on. You can see now what it's done is I've got both the um, the ramp and now I also have the cut, the truck shovel cut with with the ramp that I've built on there. So the next thing I want to do, one I, I want to do one more, and this one I'm going to do a fill. So now if I turn my design lines back on, so what I want to do is a fill here. And I know I... I, I've got this much room. I just want to see how much volume I can put in here. So now that I have a new surface to shoot for, I have my new surface. So I'm just going to go to the fill. And the nice thing about SRP, short range planning tools, is it, it, it fills in and populates the form for you so you know what surface to use. So now what I want to do is put a dump right here in the pit as I, you know, because I'm going to move that material down there. So I, I look at my angles. I, this one's going to have a swell factor. And I want to drape. So I don't want to drape this surface. So I'm going to say no drape because I've got it set to an elevation. If I just hover over that, it's 425 is the elevation. That's, that's how high I want to build that dump right now. But I am going to project it down to this new service I built. So I'm going to do the drape and project. Okay, so it's going to go off and project this element for me. And you see that it's, it's done the projections for me right here. Next thing I'm going to do, I need to mesh it because I need to, it, I want to see what it's going to look like and it's going to generate the contours for me. So it gives me an idea what it's going to look like. And then what I need to do is compute the cut and fill for it before I can move on to the commit plan. In this case, it's going to put 502,000 cubic meters of material. So my next step is to go ahead and commit the plan, build, me, build uh, my, my new DTM. So I'll just commit that plan, and it's merging the DTMs right now. So, so now that uh, the DTM is, has been merged, so it, it's this is my fourth um, step. You can see that um, on the contours, I'll go ahead and turn the mesh on. And, and see, it's managing the mesh for you. So this is my fourth step. You can also turn on the fill. So there's there is the mesh for the fill. There's the mesh for the ramp, and here's the mesh for the cut. So you have you have all those separated for you. And, but ultimately, you want to build a DTM surface, too. So I'll turn those off, and I'll just turn on the, the fourth one. And again, you can, uh, you can do a visual override on all these. So if I want to do a height cue on this, let's say I want to do, um, let's do rainbow colors on this, and we'll go from high to low. I mean, from low to high, sorry. And so there, there's rainbow contours of, of my particular design. So this is my final, this is my final design right here. You can go ahead and, and just turn that, uh, clear that visual override. So I'm, I'm basically done with, with the designs I wanted to do. And again, again, if you, if you look here, it's, it's managing your layers for you. So it's I called it PID01, and then that's a first step, second step, third step, fourth step. So it keeps track of what, you, what you're doing. So if I turn my designs on so you can see what we've done, now if you open up this form, it also it keeps track of, of everything you've done here. So if I go to the audit log, Keeps track of everything you've done. Now, granted, this is the first one it did, and did you know we were just setting up the, the um, scenario. 
but it tells me how much cut, how much fill I have in my ramp, and how much fill I have in my dump. So now you can actually export these. You can do call outs, and you can call any one of these out and label on your, your layers. And you can also create um, um, a table of your information out here, and you can dump it to um, an Excel uh, file also. So you have that available for you. Another good feature um, in, in this, after you know, I showed you the, the audit log functionality, if, let's say you, you started looking at this again, you go, you know what? That last, that last design I did for that, Phil, it's, it's, it's wrong. So you can actually come back in here and think, okay, I need to redesign this. So if you come back into your mind plan and see how it says current surface, I want to back up one surface. And if you notice here, it asks you, you know, well, let's go ahead and back up one step. So remember, this is step four. So if I say, okay, I'm going to delete that step, what it does is it removes everything associated with that step four and puts you right back to where you, you need to go. So I can go right back in here and and turn on my design lines. Let's say I've got a new design line again. I've readjusted my design. I just come right back in here and said, okay, no drape. This is fill. Everything's good. Um, you, if you want it, you can change your swell factor. I come right back in here. I, I select that element. Um, again, just, just like you did before. And you're right back to where you started from. So you're just, it's, it's, it's really forgiving in that sense. It, 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 it helps you manage your work and your workflow. So that, there you go. There's um, short range planning tools. Thank you.